Greetings! It is I, Tentus Naraman Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the Lands, Legends, Plains, and Planeswalkers of Magic the Gathering, where I go over each of these elements of the lore of Magic the Gathering, the various world settings, details about them, history, information about these pieces that help build the entire world in a picture for you that's made through these various cards in Magic the Gathering. So today for you, I have another Planeswalker. Garuk Wildspeaker. So Garuk Wildspeaker is in fact a human planeswalker who was previously, at least to begin with, aligned with green mana. Though in more recent times, black mana has been seeping into him. Now he is a warrior druid whose philosophy pushes him to live naturally, to be one with the wild, to become in the wild a predator itself. That's what he aspires to be, a true predator of nature. Now he's gruff and impatient, and he hates civilization. He prefers to live in the wild. The civilized world and talking to people are things that he just could deal without. In fact, when he thinks of people, he automatically assumes that when they see him, they see a monster. He assumes that's what they see when they see him. Now, when he defeats a powerful prey, he in fact connects with part of that prey in order to prove that he's defeated and to gain some of its strength. Garuk himself is a statuesque man of 8 foot 2 inches and 480 pounds. He is a giant of a man. Now Garuk's story though starts off when he is a young boy. He lived with his father, a task mage named Nathan, on a small farm. And the two of them grew up perfectly fine. When Garuk became 10 though, his father taught him his first spell, hoping him that maybe perhaps he would want to become a task mage too. But this was not the joyous day it should be. This ended up being a dark and twisted day. A sheriff of the local area came under the orders of a lord to take Garuk away to join his army. He was recruiting young boys into his army. His father helped Garuk to escape into the wilds, to run away and was of course arrested in the meantime. He told Garuk to run and hide there until he would tell him it was safe. And so he did. Garuk avoided the guards and kept communication with his father through an artifact he'd be given. His father, who was now trapped and in jail, his father would continue to tell him of the evils of man and that, that around him, nature, that he should trust it, listen to what it says to him, listen to the lessons it has to teach him. Of course, time is a cruel mistress, and so is imprisonment. Garuk's father dies. After seven years in the wild, Garuk had now tamed a great number of beasts, had created a small entourage, and gained much more power. But now, his father was dead, and he seethed for revenge. So he returned home to the village that his farm had been around. And there he had some of his beasts rampage across it. He used this to attract the attention of the sheriff. The sheriff, of course, arrested him, took him away. Took him to the very jail which his father died in. Garuk planned for this. He summoned a mighty worm who destroyed the jail and devoured the sheriff. He took the sheriff's hat and he left into the wild, turning his back on what was left of the civilization which he had spent only ten years in. Now, after this period of time, we do know that Garuk awakened, his spark ignited as a planeswalker. When exactly, we are unsure. But we do know that he heard tales of a legendary beast on another plane, on Chandelar, the Ursoth. This creature, hunting it, was a great challenge in his mind. So he traveled to Chandelar in order to hunt this beast. He summoned a good number of his own beasts to head out into the wild and begin the hunt. But there was another during this time period in the plain. Lana Vess was here. She ran into one of Garak's beasts and slayed it to protect herself. Garuk was infuriated and decided to hunt down the necromancer. He did so. He hunted her to the ruins of an Anaki temple. She had come to this temple in order to seek an artifact, the Chain Veil, and she had found it. Garuk confronted her and defeated her soundly in such a way that she was forced to use the very artifact that she had picked up, 
the chain veil to protect herself. She channeled its powers into Garuk. This infusion of black mana swept over the, the green-aligned planeswalker, tainting him, cursing him, muddling his connection to nature. He was forced to retreat. This curse infusing him with darkness and corrupting his own powers. He sought a cure. And the way he sought to get a cure was through Lilana to see what she had done to him. Now, the easiest way he thought of doing this was to travel to a place he had sworn he would never return to. Ravnica. The city plane. With so very little nature to it, it's a place he did not want to go to. But he went there. And he tracked down Jace. He confronted Jace. He attacked Jace. Beat him to an inch of his life. He managed to regain his senses before dealing the final blow. But this act forced Jace to tell him the last location the Lana had been. This is the information he wanted. He wanted to track her down. Now, he soon planes walked away from Ravnica. And we only know that a short time after this, he went to an unknown plane and joined employment under a Gorgon as a bounty hunter. He would use this opportunity to gain information from this Gorgon. Information that would help him track down Lalana. Now it's after now that he learned of Lalana on Innistrad. So he went to Innistrad. He planeswalked there. He went to Kresika first, the place of wolves and nature. Eventually, though, he tracked her to Nephilim where he confronted her. But she was much better prepared for him this time. She used her army of ghouls and ghasts and zombies to attack him, and in fact, in a way, defeated him. She used them to escape. He was able to soundly defeat all these undead. But in the process of this, as this piling down of this infusion of darkness and rage in him, he lost himself to the curse. He became nothing more than a raving monster and began to ravage across the land. Man and beast alike would not be satiate him. He would hunt everything and crush and kill it. And he would have been a mindless beast if not for one thing. Garuk Wildspeaker was almost lost here. But far away, in a distant location, an angel, Avassian, cast a spell across all of Innistrad the curse mute. This was in order to save Innistrad, but it had a secondary effect. It dulled the curse on Garuk. He regained his senses, something that he realized he might not have ever had. He was left with this situation, track down, confront Lalana, or to find out what had caused this miracle in himself. He decided to track down the source of the curse mute. In his travels, though, he came across a small village where he took refuge in a house of a murdered woman. Unfortunately, Odric and his knights came to this place. They confronted him in this place, thinking that he was the one that murdered the woman when he was not behind it. They attacked him and would have killed him. They had the opportunity to, because he was still in a weakened state from this all. But one of Odric's men stayed his hand. They did manage to capture them in then, and were going to take him for trial in the capital. But the curse reemerged, reawakened, reinvigorated him, and he was able to break free of them, enraged. And he planes walked away. As he left Innistrad, his, the curse dulled him, dulled his connection to nature, dulled his mind in a way. He had been a predator before, but he also had this rage and anger and hatred of Lalana. It evolved. Now all planeswalkers were his enemy. They were all his prey. He would kill them, the ultimate prey for him. So now he was very little of a predator left. He was now more murderer. And each time he would take a life, each time he would murder someone, just a little bit more of his humanity would eke away, would disintegrate. Eventually, though, he was com he was confronted by a planeswalker from Innistrad, Vronos. Vronos hoped to capture him and take him back and perhaps help and cure him. But Garuk wouldn't hear anything of it. Garuk slayed Vronos, took his mask as a souvenir. It was soon after there, though, that his transformation into what he was becoming was almost complete. He traveled to Chandelar. The location all began. If his transformation would finish, 
Chandelar would be destroyed. It's unsure if this is exactly Jace, but it is said that Jace did this, this next part. Though someone else could have, the stories of it are spotty. Regardless, a hedron, an artifact of Zendikar, was used. It was used to seal away some of the cursed, to stop Garuk's final transformation into a demon. Broken away was saved. And after this, though, there was a confrontation that we know about between Jace and Garuk. Jace tried to deceive Garuk, thinking he was Alana. But Garuk saw Thorderid completely and utterly right away. Garuk went to him and told him he wasn't, he didn't want any kind of help anymore. He didn't want a cure. Garuk liked what he had become. He had himself again, in a way. He had been helped, but he liked this new creature. He would not hear of it anymore, and he warned Jace that if they would meet next time, it would not be under friendly circumstances, and he showed his great power, and Jace left. But this was all but posturing. Garuk was very weak after everything that had happened once again. A planeswalker that worked for Vornos came, hoping to capture him and bring him back, but Garuk was smart. He pointed out the mask, the thing that he had taken from Vronos, and this planeswalker he called Icy tried to run, but wasn't fast enough. A sweep of the axe, and Icy was a foot shorter. Crook then just took his leave, and planeswalked to some unknown location. Where? We don't know. We haven't seen him since. He's still out there. Now, Garuk Wildspeaker has been depicted in five cards. Three green cards. A flip card, where, where he flips from green to black. And, of course, a green-black. His final appearance. But, that's it for today. I introduced you to an interesting planeswalker. A, in a way, tragic figure. A figure who at once had been a great predator. A great hunter. And he seemed like an interesting character. But darkness hit into him. A curse from a necromancer. A terrible meeting. And the curse consumed him. And has changed him into a monster. A monster like he thought others always thought of him as. But now, truly, he is the monster that he thought he was. In others' eyes. And he hunts. He hunts beast. He hunts planeswalker. Alike. Well, I hope you're having a great day. If you have any stories about any kind of lore from Magic Gathering that you really enjoy, mention what you really love and what you might want to hear about in the future in the comments below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.